CS407 Numerical Analysis, Section 10.2 Estimation of Areas and Volumes by Monte Carlo Techniques. So, in this section, we're going to work with uh, estimation of areas and volumes. The uh, last time we explored random numbers and how they are generated, we're now interested in applications of these. And our first application of these random numbers is the approximation of a definite integral by the Monte Carlo method. <clears throat> So if we select the first n elements, x1, x2, all the way to xn from a random sequence in the interval 0, 1, then the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx is approximately 1 over n times the sum of f evaluated at the individual points x sub i. Here the integral is approximated by the average of those n numbers, namely f of x1, f of x2, f to xn. When this is actually carried out, the error is within order of 1 over square root of n, which is not at all competitive with good algorithms such as the Romberg method, but it does actually work well in higher dimensions. So in higher dimensions, it can yield very good results. For example, the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral of 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1, the integration in 3 space of f of x, y, z, dx, dy, dz, uh, conforms to the same 1 over n times the sum of f evaluated at those individual points, where those individual points are a random sequence of n points in the unit cube. Now to obtain these uh, random points, we have a random sequence in 0, 1, and we denote these as xi1, xi2, xi3, xi4, xi5, xi6, and to get our first random point we just simply select the first three and that will give us the uh, for the point, first point in P space. Of course, P1 is going to be xi4, xi5, xi6. If the interval in a one dimensional integral is not of length 1, but say in this case AB, then the average of f over the m random points in AB is not simply an approximation of the integral, <clears throat> but rather for 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This definition agrees with our intention that the function f of x equals 1 has an average of 1. Similarly, in higher dimensions, the average of f over a region is obtained by integrating and dividing the area, volume, or measure of that re region. For example, <clears throat> the integral below would have to be multiplied by 1 eighth because the sum of the individual units would sum up to 8. This is the average of f over the parallel pipe described by the following inequalities. x goes from 0 to 2, y goes from minus 1 to 1, and z goes from 1 to 3. To keep the limits of integration straight, we recall that we kind of work from the inside out. So we, in the first equation, we would evaluate the integral from c to d, and then integrate from a to b. And then the second equation, again, working from the inside out, from c1 to c2, b1 to b2, and then a1 to a2. So if x i y i denotes random points with appropriate uniform distribution, then the following illustrate Monte Carlo techniques. This first one is going to be 5 over n times the sum of the individual points. This one will be 5 times 3, 15 over n times the sum of the individual points. In each case, the random point should be uniformly distributed in the regions involved. In general, the integral of f over a is the measure of a multiplied by the average of f over n random points in a. Here we're using the fact that the average of a function on a set is equal to the integral of the function over the set divided by the measure of the set. Now we're ready to look at some examples and some pseudocode for solving these types of problems. So here we want to obtain the numerical value for the integral over the region omega sine of the natural log of x plus y plus 1 taken raised to the 1 half power of the square root of that. Uh, that's a pretty ugly integral. Uh, we can shorten this by saying it's the integral over omega of f of x, y, dx, dy. And we want this over the disk in space x, y. And that's defined by the inequality x minus 1 half squared plus y minus 1 half squared is less than 1 quarter. And so down here you can see the disk in the uh, xy plane and it's surrounded by the square region going from 1 to 1 on both x and y. And we want to integrate this surface over that particular area. 
So the picture is a sketch of the surface f of x, y above the disk omega. Now in the bad old days, we used to have to sketch all these things by hand. Uh, Calc 3 provided years of nightmares for me about this stuff. Uh, you'll notice the square that surrounds the disk on the x, y plane again to let us know that we're going to make use of that. So what we do is we proceed by generating random points in the square and we pitch out those that don't lie in the disk and we do this until we get about 5,000 points in the disk. Now if the points pi is equal to xi, yi, then the integral can be estimated to be pi over 4m, which is the area that we're integrating over, times the summation of those individual points, so the average height of f over n random points. Let's take a look at the uh, pseudocode for accomplishing this. So here's the pseudocode that will actually uh, accomplish uh, this particular task. Uh, now what it does is it does some intermediate estimates of the integral that get printed when n is a multiple of a thousand since this saves a bit of processing time versus printing every intermediate value. And this routine, you know, also because we're outputting these uh, every 1,000 steps gives us an idea of how the correct value is being approached by our averaging process. We also need to code the external real function that we're evaluating. At the end, when you run this program, it gives a result of about 0.57. We can also use this Monte Carlo method for computing volumes. And we can do that for the volume of a complicated region 3 space. For example, we want to determine the volume of the region whose points uh, satisfy these three inequalities. Now, the first one there is a cube with volume 1, and so the overall region defined by this is going to be a subset of this cube given by the other two equations. If we generate n random points in the cube and determine that m of them satisfy the last two inequalities, then the desired volume of the region is approximately, approximately m over n. Let's take a look at the pseudocode for accomplishing that. And observe again we have the intermediate estimates that are printed out when we reach 1,000, 2,000, and 5,000 points. An approximate value for the volume of the region is going to end up being 0.14 in this particular case. Um, finally, let's take a look at an example involving ice cream. Everybody loves ice cream, but you probably won't so much after we finish this example. Uh, consider the problem of finding the volume of the above cone, z is equal to x squared plus y squared inside the sphere x squared plus y squared minus z minus 1 squared equals 1. The volume is contained in the box bounded by x goes from minus 1 to 1, y goes from minus 1 to 1, and z goes from 0 to 2. Now we want to generate random points inside those box, inside that box, figure out the ones that are inside the area where we desire the volume, and that'll We'll then take the ratio of those inside the desired volume to the total number generated and multiply them by 8. We can finish up by looking at the pseudocode. So the pseudocode again is going to look familiar and as before we print out the results after each 1000 calls to see how the volume is converging. This is the role of the variable IPERT, IPRT. The other thing to note is that the random array is two-dimensional. Now the one that we coded up is uh, a one-dimensional vector, but with suitable modifications you can implement this code with the one-dimensional vector by taking every other point instead of indexing it with r uh, i1 and r i2. Uh, the condition serves to check whether the points are, the if condition here serves to check whether those points are inside the desired area and probably will recall nightmares of analytic geometry from a long time ago. Uh, next time we're going to use our random number techniques to create some very small simulations.